Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I'm very excited to share with you this recipe of pizza dough, homemade but really very close to something that you would find in a pizzeria. We will start by making the pre-ferment called Polish and that is by mixing 300 grams of room temperature water with 1-2 grams of active dry yeast which is quarter of a teaspoon and 300 grams of bread flour and mix everything well together and we will leave this to ferment overnight in my case I will show you later other options uh, of timing so I will cover this and leave overnight and then next day in the morning I'm dissolving the salt to 20 grams of salt with 50 grams of water it will probably not dissolve completely just do what you can don't stress about it and then to the poolish I will add the rest of 200 grams of bread flour and then this mixture of salt and water and then you will have to mix as well as you can you can also use a stand mixer if you have one and you don't want to get your hands dirty I would just um, pinch the dough and fold it and it's gonna be a little bit difficult at the beginning because it already developed uh, gluten strength uh, while sitting at night but mix it as well as you can so then no lumps are left and all the flour is incorporated you will get this kind of sticky dough that you will form in a bowl and then cover and let the rest for 30 minutes I'm cleaning here my hands with the spoon this is maybe the trickiest part you have all this dough on your hands so I will cover it and leave it for half an hour now that the flour had time to hydrate and the dough relaxed we will do some stretch and folds I am wetting my hands you can also do it or just leave it um, like this and I will stretch the dough maybe around eight times until I see that it cannot be folded anymore this will help further with the gluten development it is already quite strong as you can see <laughs> I'm having some trouble stretching it and this way I'm also further mixing the salt that was not dissolved and if any lumps are there I try to break them and then I pinch everything in a bowl as you can see here and this dough I will I will leave it to further ferment an hour and a half it also depends on if your um, room temperature is higher than mine. I don't have a very, very high temperature in my home. It might ferment in one hour, for example. Okay, I'm preparing now a rectangular um, recipient where I will keep the balls for the pizza. I'm also oiling the surface. Then I flipped the dough onto the oiled surface and I divided my dough into three parts. You can also divide, divide it in four parts if you want smaller pizzas that would be for sure more manageable. And then I start forming the balls by folding it and then uh, tuck it under. I don't know if you ever saw a mozzarella video how they do it this is something similar you have to create some tension surface tension and then 
I put them in the recipient um, with the folding side down. And I do the same for uh, the rest of the dough, as you can see. And I leave quite a lot of room between them because they will extend a lot. I will leave this on the counter for another hour to for them to start puffing up. And then, as you can see, they puffed up a little bit. And then I will transfer them into the fridge for the slow and long fermentation. This is quite a forgiving dough and I think you can just adapt it to your timetable. So you can, for example, in the option one, as you see, you can make the polish in the evening and then in the morning do the mixing and the folding and everything. And then ferment for 12, for 24 or 36 hours as you wish in the fridge. Or you can start in the morning to do the polish, then in the evening you can do the stretch and fold, the mixing and everything. And then again leave it to ferment. So it requires a little bit of planning, but it can be adapted to your needs and when you have time. After 24 hours in the fridge, my dough is fermented and expanded and I will leave it for an hour in the at room temperature to get a little bit warm. And I'm preparing in the meanwhile the ingredients. Here I have some mozzarella that I drained. I have a can of tomato peeled and I'm just squeezing it and adding some um, oregano and marjoram and some olive oil and salt. I don't add too much salt because the dough is quite salty. Mix everything together and that's my pizza sauce. And now very important, you have to preheat the oven at the highest temperature that your oven can handle and use the fan option so that everything gets very well heated. And I also use a baking tray that is inverted because I don't have a pizza stone and this will get very hot in the oven while we wait. I chose to use this um, tray which is made for pizza, it's a very thin material but you can use parchment paper that will work just fine. And now I'm just spreading some flour on the dough so that I can detach the three balls. And you have to do this carefully so that you don't deflate it. And I have prepared this um, little bowl with um, flour. This will help you with the stickiness of the dough. And I flip it in the flour. Be generous with the flour. And then I flip it on the surface and I only use my hands to punch it lightly in the middle. And then I flip it again and then once more and then I just try to stretch it lightly. You can put your fingers under the dough and stretch slightly leaving a thicker edge and a thinner center. This thicker edge will then rise and bubble like in a Neapolitan style pizza. Then I transfer it to the baking sheet or in your case maybe parchment paper. I stretch it and then I use my self-made sauce and spread lightly. So we have to bake this for 2-3 minutes until the sauce is um, dried a little bit and the um, edges are a little bit golden. And then I add whatever I want to add to the pizza, which was parmig parmesan in this case and olives and mozzarella and some wild garlic leaves and very important I also oil the edges for more crunchiness and then I return it to the oven for two three minutes until it's all done and then I transferred it to a cooling rack for a bit and then on the plate and cut and serve this is the second pizza I did parmesan go down some ham some cooked 
champignons and mozzarella again the oil on the edges so remember you have to cook first the dough with the tomato sauce a little bit and then you put the rest of the ingredients otherwise the center would get soggy in this case i use some capers and salmon and some goat cheese just to give you some ideas i hope you like this video and i hope you give it a try it's a delicious pizza and it's not difficult to do at home thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one